Welcome to the bold analysis. Finally, the Sagana Convention that Rigadi Geshago mentioned in January is going to be held next week on Wednesday, which is going to culminate William Ruto's five days tour in Mount Kenya. And to be fair enough, just like the other regions, I think Mount Kenya also deserve to have a seat with William Ruto so that they can discuss what pertains the region. I may not, many of us may not agree with it, but being that that is the leadership style of Kenya Kwanzaa, Mount Kenya also deserves to have a seat with William Ruto. The political mobilization and consolidation scheme is coming at a time the region is battling some very dangerous ghosts. And this is at the center of William Ruto's tour. The first ghost is the coffee crisis. And I have I analyzed here about coffee crisis. The sector is in total collapse after licenses of those uh, coffee in the supply chain were actually revoked. Those in the supply chain were actually called cartels, were revoked, and farmers were stuck with unsold coffee. That is a crisis that is there. And me thinks that when I was analyzing about the coffee, I said that probably is a making of the state so that William Ruto can find something to chew when he goes to Mount Kenya. He can find a giant problem to solve. There have also been the problem of stall projects because the Mau Mau Road, amongst others, are ones that have been at the chopping board. After 100 dams pledge, um, the cabinet secretary in charge, Ali Swahome, has said it is unrealistic and it is not going to be, they are not going to realize that. So they have reduced it and the other political overtures. And so, one thing we, is that the country is asking the real mission of William Ruto's uh, tour in Mount Kenya. And it is the development and political. Two, uh, when it comes to Kenya Kwanzaa, William Ruto's uh, political um, uh, trips or rather development tours are very, um, are very predictable. It's, not, it's nothing out of the moon. It's both development, launching road there, launching water there, giving a bus to that school and this, and, you know, and develop and, and political. But the sorry state of affairs is that political is actually number one. <laughs> the development is monet. But before I explain on the real mission, there is some exclusive political uh, development that the sources from the inside are now trying to relay is that there are frantic efforts to win the attendance of Martha Wangari Karua, Peter Munya, amongst other high-profile leaders from the region that have not been sitting around the table with William Ruto, that have not been close with William Ruto, on, especially on the Wednesday meeting under the umbrella of Mount Kenya Unity which is aimed at probably ripping Azimula Umoja apart, or maybe it will be the culmination of Jubilee Party takeover. And so, it is very clear that there have been invitations and also secret approaches by emissaries from the government side to win the attendance of Mata Karua. Now, this is a very delicate uh, situation here because when William Ruto went to Nyanza, Rai Ludinga allowed Nyanza governors, Nyanza MPs, all across the political divide, they welcomed William Ruto, the very first development tour in the Nyanza region, and they welcomed William Ruto there. It was a very warm reception, 
and the whole country saw that Nyanza gave a master class on how to win from a presidential tour in your region. And so, someone may, I may leave this to you to find out. Would you think attendance of Martha Karua or Peter Munya or I also understand the rhythm read and Jeremiah Kenya are also on the radar, on the radar. Would you think that attendance probably of Martha Karua would be understood as um, decamping or just a unity um, image? I really want to get to your point on that. What do you see? <laughs> Remember, this is not something that come up new. In the making of the bipartisan talks, which is going to be part, I can I largely tell you, it's going to be part of uh, this. There was a talk of Jeremiah Kiyuni and Martha Karua. Martha Karua raising a question of there was no representative of representative of Mount Kenya in that, especially on the Osmia side. So if you look at the other side, there are two politicians from the mountain, um, Cecil Barwile, the M governor, and the majority leader, none other than uh, Kimani Chungwa. So I don't know, what would you take, what would be your take? On it but that was just a by the way however this tour political tour come development has this four missions so on Wednesday evening we will do a fact check we'll check met whether this uh, mission this 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 these missions or these objectives are going to be achieved we'll just keep the same checklist when we come back We'll analyze it, whether they received what, was, what has worked, what has not failed. But I can tell you that for exclusive coverage and in-depth analysis about William Ruto's tour in Mount Kenya, I know that even the founders of the Bold know very well that one of our strongest points in political analysis was analyzing Ruto's Mount Kenya stake. It will be so you can bank on the bold podcast. You can bank on the bold podcast on this. One of the reasons why Ruto is going to Mount Kenya, and I'm looking at the political aspects, then I'll look at the development, is since the formation of the bipartisan talks, uh, since the, um, the mediation talks started, there were fears from Nyeri and other areas that in any case, Raila Odinga is going to have an agreement with William Ruto that is going to push Mount Kenya to the periphery. In fact, is going to decimate regarding Ashagwa. That has been the fear. And that is why, from the word go, uh, Kimani Chungwa, who I believe is the representative of regarding Ashagwa and those talks, came out and made a very solid statement that according to what they have agreed, there is nothing like handshake or nusumkate. Now, you will agree with me, if you make political observation, that one of the key factor that Kenya Kwanza has been repeating all along in any statement they make in respect to the bipartisan talks is that there is no handshake or there is no nusumkate. And so, what William Ruto wants to do is to go to Mount Kenya to wipe the emotions by reassurance that when we talk with Raelo Dinga, I am not going to betray your sons. Now, the whole thing will be about averting a betrayal. But, you know, and, and, and at the end of it, William Ruto will then project as if, a picture as if the biggest problem that Mount Kenya is facing now is betrayal from William Ruto, the way Uhuru Kenyatta allegedly disseminated, um, uh, pushed Mount Kenya politicians to the periphery. So, believe me you, from Saturday, Sunday, interdenominational meeting, Monday, Tuesday, all those areas and every speech, everyone is going to speak, talk a speech, is going to talk about no handshake, no sumkate, they only talks. 
So that is one reason. And that is why that tour has come at a, at a critical time. I can tell you that this tour has just been fixed. Of course, William Ruto last five days was in the coast. He was in the coast, then after coming to coast, he's going to central, and probably after central, he will go now to, to the Rift Valley, which is not yet. So he's going to leave fears of Nusumkat. Number two, the second mission is William Ruto is going to popularize what will be populist government achievements. And I not miss my words. Did you remember the other day when the president put to task members of his cabinet and some other uh, civil servants that they are doing less to explain to Kenyans what the government is doing? Now, what he's doing is that he wants to go and, number one, one message that William Brewer is going to talk about and mark this podcast. Immediately when you hear that, you will remember, even when, you, even when you are watching this in another YouTube channel, you will remember that I, Kevin said it. He's going to remind the Mount Kenya fellows that the price of fertilizer has dropped from 3,500 to 2,500. He's going to remind them because that is something he has said. And you know, I have, uh, I'm, 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 you know I'm, I'm keen on messaging. If you are keen, you realize that the template of Kenya Kwanzaa messaging, anything happening has to be attributed to William Ruto. No one else is supposed to take credit. By the way, even when you look at Twitter or the way the messages or the articles are being published on, on this fertilizer issue, realize the title is William Ruto has dropped. And even Ruto himself is saying, myself, I have dropped. No one is saying ourselves as government or in the ministry, through the Ministry of Agriculture, under the stewardship of Bethika Linturi, we have lowered. Or rather, through a coordination with this and that, we have. No one is saying we. The messaging is singular. First person, singular. You know, that is William Ruto. So that is why he's going to tell the people in the mountain that me, me, William Samuel Ruto, I have reduced the price of fertilizer. And someone tipped me, asking me, we are in the month of August. It has been lowered. So it is lowered at the time there is the planting season. You're waiting to see. Uh, I, I saw someone in the comment section in this podcast saying, from Kiambu, saying that um, the fertilizer has been lowered, our Jaona, because it's only targeting some small-scale farmers. I don't know. I don't want to go into do another agent of propaganda. But again, Mgala if the if indeed the, the fertilizer has gone to 2,500, then that's a good takeaway from William Ruto. And so what he's doing is this. He knows very well the other project that is taking to the mountain is the second phase of Hustler Fund. If, did you remember the president saying the other day that he called the PS in charge of Hustler Fund, I think Waziri, and challenge them to do more to sensitize Kenyans about the second phase, the new loan facility that government has unleashed. And Hustler Fund was targeting Mount Kenya because during the campaign, those were the hustlers of the moment. So he's going there to remind them about Hustler Fund that I have pushed. And do you know the, the, the deal? The deal is very easy. When the president is in the mountain, all the TV and radio stations from Mount Kenya are going to camp and put their cameras in front of William Ruto. And through that, he's getting media coverage and cooling the masses. I can tell you, it's about cooling the masses. The other third aspect that is taking William Ruto there is activating the dead church network. The church network from Mount Kenya who were smoothly and voluntarily used to, as uh, their spaces were used for campaign, they had some MOU with the William Ruto. And that MOU was not obeyed. And again, after Ruto getting the presidency, he then had a blend with the mainstream churches, not just working with the evangelicals, but the evangelicals seems to have been pushed in the periphery. 
But now this is a time that needs very desperate measures because um, Kenyans are battling with the reality and the reality and the reality is that William Ruto cannot achieve the heaven that he promised. So what you need to do, you need to turn down. He's going to have these interdenominational meetings. All these rallies and political events that he's going to hold in Mount Kenya, you will see the presence of the church leaders almost throughout in different counties here and there. They will be given very special space recognition and even their pockets are going to be oiled so that, you know, it's toning for them. You get them together if they're going to state house, Sagana, they're going to get some allowances here and there and people go home excited with, with some short-term excitement. I expect another mission. There's been a challenge that Mount Kenya and peace are really giving William Ruto a hard time. And um, I'll tell, I'll explain that in some other podcast uh, another day why. And I tend to see when a number of people that were locked out were Kindiki, Anwaiguru, then I then a governor, Nyeri, uh, Kenya governor, and Moses Kuri, they're from Mount Kenya. So what do you expect? This is going to set a ground to dress down cabinet members from the public. In fact, William Ruto is going to vilify these cabinet members there in preparation for what can come next. That is my expectation. And if you ask me, if Bata Karwa is invited to go to attend, let her attend. If indeed it will be about the unity of a region, it will be about their unity, why not? The other caucuses have been meeting. I, this might be controversial, but I tend to think that um, instead of, because everyone who is not there is going to be seen as an outcast of the community, then you beat them in their own, in their own game. You join, but you remain within your principles. If someone gives you a chance to talk, nothing stops you from still asserting your principle or your position on the national dialogue or the national conversation and not leaning to the agenda of Kenya Kwanzaa. That is my take. Let's meet in the next. In the next podcast, I'm still remaining this. I'm telling you something that I don't want you to miss here.